in this lesson we're going to take a look at delegating control within Active Directory. So to begin with, I'm going to click on Start, Administrative Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my sales organizational unit that I have here. And I'm going to expand that. I'm going to click on one of them that I've already created called Kalamazoo and there's no users currently in this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and start off by creating a new user. And I'm just going to go ahead and call it John Adams. And the username is J Adams. And we'll go ahead and hit next and give him a password. I'm going to uncheck the change user password here. Just hit next and finish. So now I've got a user called John Adams who's a normal user. If I double click on him, I can go to the member of tab and I see that he's just a domain user. So he has no special privileges at all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delegate control of the Kalamazoo organizational unit to this John Adams. And so what I'll do is right click on this and we're going to go ahead and hit delegate control. And a little wizard pops up that we're going to go ahead and hit next on. And then we're going to select the user that I want to give basically control or some additional rights to this organizational unit. So I'm going to go ahead and choose add and type in the name John and I'll just hit check names here and there it fills in John Adams for me and hit OK and there's John Adams. We're going to give him these particular new regulations or control or delegate control to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit next there and you can see I've got quite a few different options to actually delegate here. I can allow him to create, delete, and manage user accounts this is only going to be in the organizational unit that we have selected, which is currently the Kalamazoo one. So I'm going to go ahead and give him that ability to do that. Um, reset user passwords and force password change to the next login. That's going to be something that I like. He can read all user information. If he's going to be in charge of that organizational unit, that might be something good to give him. As well as being able to create, delete, and manage any groups in that particular organizational unit. We can also allow him to modify the membership of a group if we want to, so that if he does create a group, he can actually add members to that group. And if you take a look here, that's probably going to be the basics to start off with, or just these ones here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. And there we go, so we'll hit Finish. And so we've given John Adams the right now to basically create users and so forth. A couple of things we've got to pay attention to is the fact that John Adams cannot log into the server at the moment just because he is a normal user. He's not an administrator. He can also not remote desktop into this computer as well. I'm going to assume that John Adams is a typical user who's working on a client computer somewhere and may have to eventually log into the server to add a new user for his department and so forth. So he's probably not going to be sitting at the server most of the time. So we're going to do a couple things to give John Adams more rights as far as being able to log into the server and then be able to manage this organizational unit. So to begin with, we're going to go ahead and go to Server Manager. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the remote desktop is enabled. Notice right now it's currently disabled, which means if this John Adams was working on a client computer and needed a remote desktop in, he cannot because it's currently been disabled. So let's go ahead and come here to the Configure Remote Desktop. And I'll go ahead and allow users from, I'm going to go ahead and the less secure for this particular option. And I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And actually we'll hit select users there and choose add. Let's go ahead and add John Adams to this list. And I'll hit check, and check names. And there he goes. Notice that any administrator account will already be able to access the remote desktop. We just have to add users or groups that are currently not administrators. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK on this one and hit OK. And now John Adams can log in remotely to the computer with the remote desktop settings. However, there are a couple other settings that I'm going to need to modify. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And let's go to Start, Administrative Tools, and now the Group Policy Management. And this is going to, we're going to have to make some changes to the login capabilities on our domain controller. They have special permissions. And so I'll show you where these are located. I'm going to expand the forest expand my domain, there's my current domain, expand that as well. And what I want to do is, this is the default domain policy, this is for all the users and computers on our network, however for domain controllers they have a special one themselves, and so here they are, domain controllers. I'm going to expand that, and there it is, the default domain controllers policy. I'm going to go ahead and click on it one time, hit OK, and then I'm going to click on the settings tab, and I'll go ahead and just hit close on that. And you can see these are all the settings that are currently being applied to the domain controllers. The one that I really want to pay attention to is this log on locally. 
who can log on locally to this computer. And you can see a list of people right here. Notice John Adams, the user that I created, who is just a typical domain user, cannot log on locally to this machine. We're also going to turn on, there's a capability for remote login across the network that I want to set up as well. So we're going to go ahead and set both of those up. And here's how we do this. We're going to right click on this policy, choose edit. We're going to go ahead and expand. You can see that you've got the computer configuration here. We're going to expand the policies. We're going to expand the Windows settings. And then we're going to expand the security settings. And under local policies, I'm going to go ahead and expand that one as well. I'm going to move over some of these things here for us to take a quick look at. And now I want to go ahead and click on the user rights assignment. And we're going to look for a couple of these things here that are on our computer. The two that I really want to pay attention to are the allow logon locally and the allow logon through remote desktop services. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this and you can see these are the current groups or users that can currently log on to this machine locally as far as at the actual computer itself. I'm going to go ahead and add this John hit browse and that allows us to type it in here and then I can hit check names and there it is John Adams so hit OK and there it is our user gets filled in for us and now John Adams or Jay Adams his login name can log on locally to this computer I'll hit OK I also want to have the ability for him to log on through remote desktop because typically this user probably would not be sitting at the computer itself but may be logging in remotely through remote desktop so I'm going to go ahead and double click this one it's currently not defined so I'm going to go ahead and define this policy setting add the users or groups and just like we did before go to browse and I'm going to go ahead and type in John. I'll hit check names, hit OK. And there's Jay Adams, there's his login name, hit OK. So now Jay Adams can also log in remotely through the remote desktop as well. I'm going to hit apply and OK. And we've turned that ability on. So I can go ahead and close my group policy editor now. I'm going to go ahead and close that one as well. And what I'm going to do just to make sure things have been updated is I'm going to run the GP update command. It's going to update my group policy settings on my server. And as soon as this updates, it'll say successful. I'm going to go ahead and go to a client machine that's on my network and log in as this John Adams and see what we can do. There it is. It has updated successfully. So let's switch over to a client. So here I am on the Windows 7 computer now. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Let's see the last person I logged on was George Washington. I'm going to go ahead and switch the user. Other user. There we go. Type in J Adams and his password and we're going to log in as him and now that I've logged in I'll go ahead and go to start and we're going to go to remote desktop in which my, it shows up right here if it doesn't show up for you you can go ahead and start typing it in and you should be able to find it I'll click on remote desktop and I need to know the IP address or the name of my server to type in here on my server it's currently 192.168.1.2 so I'm going to go ahead and connect to that and there we go, we're going to log in as Jay Adams, and I'm going to type his password in. And it's going to go ahead and make my connection. And when you get this warning, go ahead and choose yes, that's fine. And it's going to go ahead and now log into the server. Now that the desktop is loaded up, I'm going to go ahead and go to start. Now I'm currently logged in as John Adams, and he does have restricted rights, and so there's not going to be a lot of things you can do on this server. However, I can go to the Active Directory Users and Computers, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to go ahead and ask me for the username for the, the credentials, and so I'll just go ahead and retype it in. My password for Jay Adams. And that should bring up my Active Directory Users and Computers here in just a moment. And there it is. We're going to expand our domain. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at expanding the sales and let's just take a look at some of his rights. If I click on Kelmasu, this is where I gave him the rights to be able to create users and so forth. Notice while I'm in the Kelmasu organizational unit, I can create a new user, I can create groups and so forth, I can right click on John Adams and I can do a lot of different things. I can right click in this blatant blank space here, choose a new group or user. Notice that I've only got those two abilities at the moment. If I go to something like Baltimore, I did not give John Adams the delegated control, and so if you'll notice, these are grayed out now. If I right-click here, there is no new. I cannot create anything new. In fact, if I right-click on George Washington, and I try to do something like reset password, let's see if it'll let me do it here. 
let's see. And I hit OK. It says I cannot complete the password change. Access is denied. So I cannot do anything outside of the Kalamazoo organizational unit that I've currently given the delegated control. But let's go ahead and create a new user here. I'll choose new user. And I'm going to go ahead and type in Thomas Jefferson. And we'll go ahead and give him a username of T Jefferson. Password. And I'll just go ahead and uncheck that and hit next and finish. Notice I was able to create a user here. So I do have the delegated control that I assigned to my user. However, I do have restricted rights anywhere else. And so this gives you the ability to pass a little bit of control to specific users, especially when it cr comes to creating new accounts and resetting passwords for user accounts. And this completes the video on the delegating control on an organizational unit.